one of the SPI work it's about challenging uh, laws that against patent rights so I'm going to present uh, the, our case in the constitutional court again the investment law okay so uh, the Indonesian Peasant Union is a national movement of landless pe people, peasants, small farmers, farm workers, and peasant uh, and indigenous-based communities. It, it was established in its current form in December 2007, taking over from its predecessor from the Federation of Indonesian Peasant Union. And we have members in 15 provinces, as you can see on the map, with, with thousands of individual members at village level. Okay, uh, so you can see this is how this is the organizational guidelines from for 2008 to 2013. We have our central issue are agrarian reform, food safety, peasant rights, struggles against neoliberalism, sustainable agriculture, and the institutional of SPI. And uh, our activities are expanding land domination, production, distribution, mass action study and research, lobby and delegation, education and training, cooperatives, campaign, and agrarian conflict resolution. And our three main programs are agrarian reform and rural development, strengthening and expanding our organization, and also strengthening peasant politics positions. Yes, yeah, so, so we're filing the case to the consistent court, SPI and others uh, civil society organization in Indonesia and we we formed this coalition called Gerak Lawan people movement against neocolonialism and imperialism it founded in 2007 in order to oppose the investment law it consists of 10 member organizations and now Gerak Lawan is become a national front for civil, civil society organization against government neoliberalism policy now we have more than for the members organization and our recent activity was in December 2013 Gerak Lawan launched the NWTO campaign to stop the WTO's ministerial meeting in Bali and Gerak Lawan also inspired some civil society organization in Asia to form social movement for alternative Asia a bigger front against neoliberalism agenda in Asia okay, so I, I, I want to explain about the Constitutional Court in Indonesia. It is guaranteed in Article 24 of Indonesia 1945 Constitution. Its function is to adjudicate constitutional case and safeguard the constitutions. The justices consist of nine justices, three justices submitted by the president, three justices submitted by the parliament, and three justices submitted by the Supreme Court. And now civil society sees the constitutional court as a battleground to challenge laws that violate the constitution and the right enshrined in it. So and now we enter the investment law number 25, 2007. So this law is part of the uh, investment climate policies improvement process that established through the presidential instruction number three of 2006 funded by the World Bank by the uh, debt of uh, 900 million US dollar and it contains a number of contentious rights including rights to tenure for 90, 95 years and when the civil society heard about uh, this law from the parliament we started to scrutinizing the laws with series of discussion and seminar within the member organization. In SPI, we we gave the draft of the of this law and we sent it to our member in province and they discuss it between 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 the members and they send their opinion to the, to the national office and mostly they they concern about about the land rights uh, regulation in in these laws. And after that we meet with the experts a lot of experts from various disciplines. The plaintiff is SPI, we have uh, the PBHI, the Legal Aid Association, the Nader Farmer Associations, HAPI, we have Binadesa Foundation, 
Women Solid Women Solidarity League. We have Labor Union, we have Friends of the Earth of Indonesia, we have a Grand Reform Consortium, and we also have a Indonesian Human Rights Force, and Women Small Enterprises Association. So, what, what are the concerns from this law is, the first one is the 100% uh, foreign ownership. So this law allow uh, foreign company own 100% of Indonesian company. And the second one is national treatment. In the article 4.2, uh, in making the basic policies set forth in paragraph and above, the government is to provide the same treatment to any domestic and foreign investor by conti continuously considering the national interest. And we also concern about the capital flight and asset repatriation. It's in the Article 8, and also the use of foreign labor, it's in the Article 10, and also our main concern is uh, the land rights in Article 22. So the court asserted that in, in the formulation of the Article 30 of the Constitution, the exploitation of natural resources for the greatest benefit of people is protected by the Constitution. Then a problem arises. When the granting of land rights, right to tenure, right to build, right of use, is given and simultaneously renewed in advance. And we can see in Article uh, 32, Paragraph 4, in the event of a dispute in the field of investment between the government with the foreign investor, the party will resolve the dispute through the international arbitration, which must be agreed upon by the parties. And this suggests that the state qualifies as a subject of regular civil law with a position equal to the investor. So the court decided that the Article 22, Paragraph 1, 2, and 4 of the investment law was contrary to the Constitution. Regulation on the right to tenure, right to build, and right to use referred in this law should defer to the stipulation of the Basic Agrarian Law of 1960. In in our basic agreement law of 1960, rights to tenure is given for 35 years, and it may be further renewed for 25 years. The right to build is given for 30 years, and it may be further renewed for 20 years. Right to use is given for 25 years, and it may be further renewed for 20 years. The court also held that the simultaneously renewed and event terms are omitted from the Article 22 of the investment law. So. Graklawan felt the constitutional court decision to defend the Article 32 of the Constitution and re-establish the provision of the right to tenure, right to build, and right of use as those set out under the basic agreement law of 1960 could be crucial in order to protect the interests of Indonesian rural citizens. Despite the, the positive development, uh, Graklawan believed that the court made a mistake with regard to Article 1, Paragraph 3 of the investment law which provide for 100% foreign ownership and was not found to be unconstitutional. Gerak Lawan also think that the Article 8 concerning the capital fight should, be, should have been abolished by the court because it could lead to, ma to mass layoff of workers if investors can move their asset and capital easily without any growth by the state. However, this court decision proved that civil society organization can play a role in correcting government policy that could could be detrimental to citizens. To citizens. So, what can we learn from from our for our efforts in filing this case to the constitutional court is we have uh, we get a lot of support from academic groups, but there are also a problem within within the process that we don't have in we don't have any sufficient elaboration on the potential human rights violation under the investment law. And also the legal challenge submitted was to focus on Article 2022 regarding the land rights. And we can see that the engagement of civil society organization with the Constitutional Court is important. And we feel that another avenue must be pursued to, define, to defend the rights of the people. Uh, yeah, so, so SPA has been doing another avenue in order to reform policies and laws of the government by drafting a new law.
So for example, we we've been we have been drafting the food the food law bill since 2008 and we gave the bill to the legislation board in the parliament and then our proposal is entered in the national legislation program in 2000 and at 2010 and then the legislation board give our proposal to the food commission the food and agriculture Co commission of the parliament and we start you know, by identifying the, the, the commission member that gonna be seated in the special uh, committee in order to discuss the food law. And we invite them to seminars and workshop to level our perception about the food law and also few, and also SPI views of the food laws. And also we help press conference and campaign to raise public awareness and we also present in the meeting in in the sessions of of the fourth commission to monitor to monitor the progress of the food law and after the law pass we we get uh, the the first draft from the fourth commission and we also submit our comment to the uh, fourth commission uh, SPI has also challenged another another uh, laws in Constitution Court, such as Coastal Management Law Number no. 27/2007, we won the case, and also the it's the recent case, the Cultivation System Law Number no. 12, 1972, and we also filed a case against the Land Acquisition for Development Interest Law Number no. 2, 2012. We lost the case, and uh, currently we have two two cases in the court, the Peasant Protection and Empowerment Law number 19, 2013, and also we filed a case again, the Food Law number 18, 2012, which is the Food Law is our proposal, but the content of the Food Law is is far from, for, from our proposal, from our hope. So we found some, some, some articles in the laws that against, against our, our, our views such as the the legalization of GMOs and the, uh, the import regulation. So we filed the case and we have the session for the uh, February fifth uh, regarding the foot law case. Thank you.